Hello, welcome to another video. Uh, this is your physics teacher, Mr. Fernando, and then today we're gonna try to derive the work kinetic energy theorem. So last time we were looking at an ant pushing a tomato, but the surface was rough because we assumed it was grass. So now we're gonna try to make it a lot easier for the ant, and we're gonna make the assumption that this surface is going to be frictionless. So if we try to look at the forces acting on the tomato, once again, we have the force of gravity acting downwards, the normal force acting up, and since the ant is pushing the tomato to the right, our applied force is directly to the right. So what we want to do today, we want to calculate the work done, like we did before, but notice that before we calculate the work done by each individual force. Now we could do that and then we can add it up together to find the total net work done. But a more easier technique will be to just try to find the net force acting in a tomato. That way we can calculate the net work done. And in this unit, a good strategy to use is always to identify the initial conditions and the final conditions. So that's why we see the tomato twice. So try to identify the initial conditions and the final conditions. So this will make your problem solving a lot easier. And again, we want to try to find the work done, but instead of doing it for each force individually, we want to find the work done by the net force. So the work done by F net. But we're still gonna use the same formula as before. So the work done by the net force is gonna be the dot product of the net force with the displacement vector. And this is a very challenging calculation, but we can do it geometrically, which is a lot easier. Just, we just need to calculate the magnitude of the net force times the magnitude of the displacement cosine of the angle form when the two are joined tail to tail. So let's go back and look at our diagram here. Because the tomato is now moving vertically up or down, we can conclude that these two forces are actually balancing each other out. So the net force is entirely provided by the applied force which is to the right. So let's try to make the conclusion. So the net force is provided by the applied force and we can conclude this because the vertical motion is not occurring so these two forces must be balancing each other out and the tomato is getting pushed along to the right so our displacement vector is directly to the right so like we said before a good strategy is to find the angle theta when they are joined tail to tail, well in this case the net force, which is the applied force, is pointing to the right. And our displacement vector is also pointing to the right. During the time that the ant is pushing along the tomato. So since these two vectors are pointing along the same direction, we can see that the angle form equals to zero degrees when they are joined tail to tail. So let's plug that into the formula and see what we get. Magnitude of the net force, magnitude of displacement, cosine of zero degrees. Plug that into your calculator and you're gonna find cosine of zero degrees is just equal to one. Simplifying this, the net force times displacement. Again, the net force and applied force in this case are the same thing because the other two forces balance each other out. Hmm. Now our goal was to derive a new equation which is called the work kinetic energy theorem. So part of that we're going to borrow from the second unit that we studied about Newton's second law. From second law we found the conclusion to be the net force provided on an object to be the same thing as mass times the acceleration. 
And in this case, if the tomato is moving to the right, there is a net force. If there's a net force, there must be an unbalanced force, which means the acceleration is to the right. Because the applied force is the net force, which is in the same direction as the acceleration vector. So we can replace this into our formula. Instead of writing F net, we could re rewrite it as mass times acceleration. So we have a new equation. Uh, this one, you know, you can make fun of it. It just spells out mad. You must be mad to do physics because physics is really hard. But if you're enjoying physics so far with your teacher me, please hit subscribe. And then that way you can stay tuned to watch future videos, all right? So let's continue on. Hmm. In this case, we borrow from the second unit, but acceleration means we need to borrow from kinematics. So remember the three big equations we discussed before? We're going to borrow from one of them. It may seem like it comes out of nowhere, but it's because we're deriving it. So this is the reason why. And we have nothing to do with time. They didn't tell us anything about time. So the equation that doesn't depend on time is V final square minus V initial square equals to 2A delta D. So this is from kinematics, and we chose this equation because nothing to do with time. We're only looking at the initial and the final conditions as the displacement took place. All right, so now from this equation, we can rewrite it in terms of acceleration. So let's sort of see what that looks like. You can divide both sides by 2 delta d. So what does it give you? The acceleration equals to V final square minus V initial square divided by 2 delta D. Great, so now we're going to make a substitution into this equation for the work done. So the work done by the net force is mass times the acceleration, but the acceleration is given in terms of the final velocity, the initial velocity, and the displacement. Here we rewrite displacement, and hopefully you're like, oh, I noticed something I could do very quickly. I have the displacement, the numerator, and the denominator, so these two quantities should cancel each other out. Let's simplify it, mass v final square minus v initial square divided by 2. Let's simplify further, so we're going to expand it out. 1 over 2 mv final square minus 1 over 2 mv initial square. That's our new formula to calculate the work done by the net force. So this formula, before I get into what it calculates here, this formula is really powerful because we don't even care what all the forces acting in the object is. We just need to know, all right, to calculate the work done as this object was moved, what was the final velocity, what was the initial velocity, and the mass of the object. So it's really convenient because it's really hard to tell sometimes what are the forces acting because what if there's friction, what, what if it was in a hill, what if there's a wind force. So it's really hard to determine all the forces. So this limits us to only think about the velocity change with the mass into our formula. But if you were clever enough, you would have realized that this equation actually represents another equation that we studied so far. So remember, a half mv squared that was the formula that we explained for kinetic energy. So recall, kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. So since we have the final square and v initial square, we're going to change the notation a bit. So instead of ek, that's where kinetic energy is, we could write this as the final kinetic energy 
minus that initial kinetic energy. Okay, so again, I'm just going to rewrite this down up here because it, it might be hard to see at the bottom. So we're trying to calculate the work done by the net force. We borrow from second law, kinematics, and the definition of kinetic energy. So we were able to rewrite this as a half mv final square minus a half mv initial square. And that was the same thing as the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So we can further rewrite this as the change in the object's kinetic energy, right? Because that's what a final minus initial represents, a change in energy, or in this case, a change in kinetic energy. So the new formula that we finally derived through all these equations is to calculate the work done by the net force. In other words, the total work done, because the net force considers all of the forces, as an object is moved from an initial position to final position, it's much easier to calculate the change in the object's kinetic energy. Again, uh, please hit subscribe, so that way you're gonna see some examples, so you can see this new formula in action, which is called the work kinetic energy theorem. So stay tuned.